everyone. I've really missed seeing you at my Let's Draw and Let's Paint Together classes. So I thought I'd put a quick video together today so we could draw together the wild dog rose. Hope you enjoy. Let me know what you think and let me see what you've done. Thank you. So today I'm going to show you how to paint this wonderful wild rose. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw this beautiful rose onto my sheet of paper. Now, if that's scary, you can use tracing paper. You just put it on your paper, put your picture over the top, draw around, and you've got your shape. But for today, I'm going to quickly just sketch out my rose. So I'm going to do it slightly off centre because it will make the composition more interesting. So there I've got my overall shape. The pencil's a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to take a, an eraser and just lighten. I can still see the pencil, but not a lot. Now, I've got two jars of very clean water and one fairly nice round soft brush, but any large brush will do. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, cover my watercolour paper with clear water and I'm going to be quite generous So these are my colours. I've got some purple, pink, orange, blue, yellow, and I can see from a previous painting I've been mixing a bit of blue to make some green there. So I'm going to take the nice blue. This is Winsor & Newton blue green shade because it's nice and turquoise. And I'm just going to spread a little bit in the top corner here and a little bit in the bottom corner. I want quite a lot of it because we're going to make it do stuff. There we go. And you can really experiment. So my dirty brush is going in one glass and here's my clean water. So I'm taking out a completely clean brush and I'm going to take some of the lemon yellow. This is Cassart lemon yellow and just you can start to see some green appearing around the edges we're not really painting we're just getting some color onto the paper into my dirty water into my clean water and i'm going to take some of the purple and this cassart uh it's called Dioxazine purple uh, is very, very strong. So I don't need too much of it. So here I've got this kind of mess. And I'm going to pick my board up. So you'll see I've taped down my paper. And I'm going to let the colours start to run around on my paper and the wonderful thing about this technique is that the paint and the water the paint will only go where there's water it will not go where the paper is dry it's quite unbelievable and i love this about watercolor I've no idea what this is going to look like and that's what I love. 
when you're putting the colour on, it only works if you've got a good amount of water and don't let it run for too long. Otherwise you do start to get a bit muddy places. You want the colours nice and vibrant. So my painting is now dry. I actually took a hairdryer to it, um, which is, sometimes can be fun because you can still push the, the colour around if it's still really wet. So this is nice and dry and that's really important. So we're going to start on the petals. Let's just refresh our memory. Very bright pink on the outside, very pale, almost white in the middle, coming to yellow. So we take the um, pink, which is, in my case here, permanent rose or cassart rose madder. Beautiful, look at how bright that is. I'm going to take the brush, just carefully take the top petal, just take it round the top here using the point. And then my favourite technique, get the water on so that the paint is going to start moving around. Quite a lot of water. some more water here so the pink will start to bleed across into the other petals that's nice a bit more of my pink chasing around tracing around the edge here trying not to get into the blue it doesn't really matter if we do go into our background it just creates a different bit of a harder edge taking the water right up to the edge of the petals. There's no hard lines. That's what we want to avoid with flowers and natural things is the, the hard, hard brush strokes. In my opinion, uh, I'm using the watercolour here to do all the work. Look at it moving around there. Just lovely. And all I'm doing really is pushing it, pushing it around. And I'm quite pink in the centre here, so I'm just going to... One thing about watercolour is you paint on and you can paint off. If you just dry your brush on a bit of kitchen roll, watch this. Look, just take it off. It's lovely, that. Because I want it nice and soft in the middle. Now I am going to pick my board up to try and make these areas run a little. And then I'm just going to dab the very centre of this rose. I want it a little bit whiter. And the other thing about watercolour is when it's still wet and you've got kitchen roll, tissue paper, you can take quite strong colours off uh, if you think you've made a mistake. You could just let it dry and paint over the top. But I just wanted to soften these lines a bit. That's okay, now I'm going to paint the centre. So for that, I've got my smaller brush going in with the lemon here. I want to stay within the white. And I've done it a little bit off centre and that's quite harsh so I'm going to just dab it a little bit soften it up put more in the centre okay that's nice and then I'm going to dot in these pieces here 
And for that, you can see I've got a bit of the orange. This is um, a very, very bright, almost fluorescent orange. You don't need to. You could re mix red and yellow to make this. But just a kind of... I'm just going to take my brush and start dotting in the stamen. And if you notice, it was all kind of uneven, so it's not a circle. It's got all kinds of shapes there. I'm not following it accurately, I'm just giving a, trying to give a bit of a random impression. And then there's some even darker pieces here, so I've added a tiny bit, tiny, tiny bit of the pink. So I'm happy with that for my rose. So now I'm going to look at doing a little bit of the foliage. And the first thing I'm going to put in is the stem. And to make the stem, uh, you can see here, I've been doing it before, is there's the yellow. Let's move that to the bottom here. And a little bit of the blue. Look at that, beautiful. But it's very, very green. So I'm going to put a little bit of pink in because I have pink on my palette. If I got red, I'd put red in and you can see it just makes it a little more natural. Now the stem, here's the center of the rose. So I'm thinking about, it would probably be coming here. So I'm just going to try with the point of my brush to just do one line. And often find the faster you do the stem line, the better. Now, can you see, I've just dropped it into the pink there. I don't mind that, but it might grow. So I'm just going to, it is growing. Dab that there. That's fine. Okay, so there's the stem. I'm going to now put in some of these uh, leaves that you can see are coming out from the edge of the flower and again if you're worried about the shape of leaves practice on a separate sheet or you could have traced them down before we started and the tracing paper is um, artist tracing paper because it means that you can get the transfer down first time you don't have to reverse it Now, I could leave that there, it's quite nice, but I think I'd like to put a few more leaves in. Hopefully you'll be the judge about whether this is the right decision or not. <laughs> If you find your background isn't quite what you want, this is a good way of covering up a splodge or a something that you don't like. So now I'm going back in with the lemon on the top of the leaf there, on the top of the leaf. The paint's still wet. There we go. And I'm gonna get a little bit of the pink same again 
coming out from underneath the rose. Last thing is the rose leaves are a little bit jagged. Let's take the curve, hard curve off. And there we have, I think, our rose picture. And the final thing, I always like it because We've got the masking tape, which is a very useful thing to hold the paper down, particularly when we're doing these big washes. And if we very carefully peel it off, I always think it creates a really nice frame and just makes your painting look that little bit more special. Take the tape off carefully because it can rip the paper. I've done that before now. Last piece. There we are. So I hope you like that. I hope you feel you can have a go. Show me what you've done. That would be great. Thank you very much.